So we have some big news that came out today, almost breaking news. It is breaking news for me. Evgeny Malkin reportedly wanted Phil Kessel out or else he would have requested a trade. So a Penguins writer came out with an article today uh, on theathletic.com. You may even know the writer. It is Rob Rossi, very hated man, I guess you could say, among Penguins fans. Listen, I'm not too big of a fan of Rob Rossi myself, but you got to give credit where credit is due. This is actually a really good piece from Rob Rossi. The title of this article is Evgeny Malkin opens up about his lost season, loneliness, and NHL future. And a lot of interesting things came out in this article, but the biggest one is his relationship with Phil Kessel. And what shocked all of us is that he was the one who wanted Phil Kessel gone. So now to me, this news coming out changes my whole perspective on this Phil Kessel trade that happened a few months ago. We're at the point right now in their careers where if Crosby and Malkin come up to you, whatever they want, you give them. If Sidney Crosby comes out right now and says, I don't like Mike Sullivan, you get rid of Mike Sullivan, no questions about it. If Malkin comes up to you and says, I don't want Kessel, you get rid of Kessel, no questions about it. And if you guys remember when Phil Kessel got traded, there was a report that came out saying that, I forget what the quote said exactly, but Phil Kessel was saying how they wanted him gone or Jim Rutherford wanted him gone. And we all looked at Jim Rutherford as the bad guy. Oh, wow, how could you, you, know, you wanted Phil Kessel gone. Phil Kessel's the victim here. But this is a part of the story, a big part of the story we did not know. And the reason why Jim wanted Phil Kessel gone was because Malkin wanted him gone. And that makes perfect sense. And now moving on to the Malkin trade rumors that came out a few months ago. And uh, this is actually my favorite part in this article. And I'm sure it's going to put a smile on your face just like it did to me. And this is in regards of Sidney Crosby. So apparently after the Malkin trade rumors came out, uh, and there was more truth to these rumors. It's not like every other year where we always been hearing Malkin's going to get traded or, you know, the rumors. And when those rumors came out, Sidney Crosby went to the front office and said, it's me and Gino. And this just made me feel so happy inside because we've seen Crosby and Malkin from when they were young. We watched them grow up three cups later. We've been there as fans watching them through their injuries, their struggles, their victories, their cups, everything. And just picturing that scenario in my head where Sidney Crosby walks up to Jim Rutherford and says, no. I'm putting my foot down. That just, it, it makes me so happy just thinking about it, right? Because we're not going to have Crosby Malkin forever. You got to, you know, it's hockey. They're going to retire eventually. One day, we're not going to have no Crosby Malkin. Like I said, they're going to retire. So just, you know, having Crosby go in there and be like, no, we're not, we're going to finish this here together. It just, it makes me, and I'm sure it makes all of you guys so, so happy that Sidney Crosby himself said that to Jim Rutherford. And now back to Malkin. If you're wondering, why does Malkin want Kessel traded? Are they not friends? Do they not like each other? Uh, it says here that they're still friends, but this is the reason why Malkin apparently wanted Kessel out. So apparently Malkin believed that Phil Kessel was content with the two cups and at this point of his career was just trying to pad his stats and make his numbers look better. And he was okay with the two cups he had already won and is not really hungry for a third. I don't really know what to say about that, but I could see where Malkin's coming from in a way. You know, Phil Kessel did look a bit, you know, off last year. I don't really know the word, but I guess Malkin said it best himself. It looked like he had been content with the two cups he already won. You know, I guess maybe that's what was wrong with Phil Kessel because he was still great, but there was just something off about him. And maybe, like I said, that was what it was. Well, what Malkin said, not me. It's Malkin. This is Malkin's words, not mine. Now, moving on from this Kessel-Malkin thing, let's talk about something else that was brought up in this article, and that is Malkin and his last season struggles. In this article, Malkin says, I think last year it was all my fault. In my opinion, I think Malkin's being a little bit too hard on himself. I mean, he wasn't great last year. We can all agree on that. I mean, he wasn't bad, I don't think. He was just mediocre to okay. And to sit here and say it was all his fault, I think is way too far. Yes, I think if he had played at the more elite level that he can, we would have you know, been in a better position. But I don't think it's his fault why the Penguins got swept last year. The problem with Malkin last year was, you know, he looked like he didn't care. He looked lazy. He looked like he was one step behind all the time. From everything that I read, it seemed like Malkin just lost his motivation last year. He was just cutting corners in everything he was doing. And what I'm about to read you right here is gonna change everything for you on why he was bad last year. He stopped staying in the gym to stretch after lifting. His legs betrayed him, feeling weaker each game. Skating had always been the foundation for his success, but his first couple steps were really hard, and Malkin says he felt slow a little bit. And what I'm about to read right now is the story of Malkin's entire season last year. He tried to compensate by cheating up ice, except he could not get back fast enough to help defensively. He forced high-risk passes because he could not consistently burst through the neutral zone or dance around opposing skaters. He put himself in harm's way with reckless dashes into the corner, 
Had he not, he never would have been able to win races to lose pucks. Now, everything that I've read on why he struggled last year, for me, it showed that he was a guy who needed to hit the reset button, but he couldn't find the reset button last year. Well, I wouldn't worry about that anymore because I think from what I'm about to read to you guys right here, he not only found the reset button, but he's hitting it and he's hitting it hard. So this year for Malkin is huge. It's gonna either prove to us that he's back or that he's maybe starting to decline. So I'm very excited to see what Malkin has in store for us. And what I'm about to read to you here is going to prove, like I said, how he's hit that reset button. Starting with this right here. He cut alcohol from his diet to train. He signed up with a health food delivery service. He ate salads and lean meats for lunch. He dropped about seven pounds. Malkin even started turning in early on weeknights. Malkin is calling this the rebuild of his body. And that's the perfect way you can word it, you know cutting back on the eating, cutting back on the drinking. He lost like seven pounds, sleeping earlier. That's just him going back on the right path. This is a player and a guy who is taking responsibility for them getting swept. He thinks it's all his fault, like we read before. He knows that the Penguins have a good enough team to win, but for that to happen, he needs to be at his 100% level. And that, for me, is what he's doing here in this offseason and what this article is really saying. He knows winning the cup again is not possible without him back at my level, it's my challenge, Malkin says. I know I can. I absolutely love those words from Gino. I know I can. Not I know and I hope to be better. No, he knows and he can fix it, which I love right there. I have not shown my game at 100%. I still think I can be better. Malkin has returned to Pittsburgh with a clear vision for the rest of his hockey life. Up first, he says, is a top five finish in the scoring race and close to 100 points for sure. You heard it here. Malkin is eyeing a top five finish in points. He wants to be around the 100 point total for the season. Now that would be perfect, right? 100 points, maybe on Art Ross. I don't think 100 points is going to exactly take it. I think it's going to be a bit more, but you know, being in the talks for that, I, that's perfect for a Penguins fan. But I don't think if Malkin doesn't get 100 points and is not top five in points at the end of the year, I don't think it's going to be a failure of a year. I just think he needs to cut the, the laziness from his game. Uh, what we talked about earlier, right? And show up big time in the playoffs too. He can have 50 points this year, but if he shows up big time in the playoffs, it's going to erase whatever season he had, good or bad. And it goes both ways. If he had a bad year and a good playoff run, we're only going to remember the good playoff run. If you have a great year and a bad playoff run, we're going to just remember the bad playoff run, unfortunately. And if you don't think Malkin is motivated enough, let me read this to you. I'm going to end the video on this quote that will definitely change how you look at Malkin's motivation. My desire is to win a fourth cup, Malkin says. It's like not many Russians with four cups. I would be the only one. This is my target right now. You know, being 33 years of age, I get where you would not have the motivation to play after having three cups, a bunch of scoring titles, doing it all pretty much. When you have a kid and a wife at home, you'd rather be with them. I could see where you lose your motivation right there. But this shows me that he's got a goal set in his head and he wants to do it. And when Malkin really wants to do something, you know, it's a scary Malkin we get. So hopefully we do get a motivated Malkin next year. I just think that's a huge deal for Malkin himself because in his entire career, Malkin has always been, how do you say it? The second guy, always left behind, the top 100 list, no Malkin. When you look at the Penguins, you look at Crosby, right? He's always been under a shadow of some sort. And for him to get that fourth cup, he'll be on top, on the top of just Russian hockey. Most cups, that's something that no Russian has done before. A record that probably won't be beaten anytime soon if Malkin does get that fourth cup. And I think that's a great way to get motivation if you're a guy like Malkin, because right now he's got a reason to play. He's not just playing hockey for the sake of playing hockey. He's got a reason to play. He wants to you know, break a record. He wants to be number one most cups as a Russian. Anyways, that's going to wrap up this video. Give me your thoughts on, you know, this news that came out today with, you know, Malkin wanting Kessel out and, you know, all the things we read today, you know, Malkin losing his motivation. Give me your thoughts on all that because this is some pretty juicy stuff that came out today that I wasn't expecting at all. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, leave a like, comment your thoughts, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.